This section covers binomial probability distributions, which are probability problems where we only have two outcomes that are possible. One such example is flipping a coin. We can either get heads or tails. Uh, however, the problems don't always have to have outcomes that are 50% probability of occurrence. For example, the problem could be about guessing on a multiple choice question where there's five options. Being correct is one outcome, that's a 20% chance, and being incorrect is the other outcome, that's an 80% chance. The things that do have to be true for a binomial probability distribution are these four criteria listed here, and we can remember what they are with the acronym BINS. So the B in BINS stands for binary, there have to be two outcomes for the problem, and we'll typically refer to those as success and failure. All our trials need to be independent of one another, and we need to have a fixed number of trials. Lastly, the probability of success stays constant in all the trials, meaning that it's not changing as we progress through the problem. If those four criteria are true, the problem is binomial, and it allows us to use this equation here. Note we have a combination to start the problem. Then we have P, which is the probability of success. It's raised to some exponent, followed by Q, the probability of failure, raised to another exponent. Both of these exponents here, X and then N minus X, if we add those together, it's gonna to total N. And N is the number of trials we have in our experiment. Okay, the word success and failure are arbitrary. They don't necessarily mean something good. For example, let's say we're rolling a standard die five times, and we want to find the probability that exactly two of those five rolls result in sixes. We'll start by identifying the important values n, x, p, and q. n is the sample size. How many trials are there in our experiment? We're rolling the die five times. x is the number of successes. In this case, we're identifying uh, rolling a six as our success, and we want to get exactly two sixes. P is the probability of rolling a six, and since it's a standard six-sided die, we have a one out of six chance of rolling a six. Q is always the complement of that, so one minus one-sixth, five-sixths. Part B, does this meet all the requirements for a binomial distribution? So we wanna go through those four criteria. It's binomial because there's two outcomes. We're either going to roll a six or we're not. I is independent. Dice rolls are independent of one another. If we roll a six on the first roll, it doesn't affect the probability of rolling or not rolling a six on the, the following roll. N, number, are there a fixed number of trials? There are, we're rolling the die five times and then we're stopping. And S, success, the probability of getting a six remains constant at one over six. Part C, let's actually find the probability of rolling exactly two sixes out of five rolls. This is how you typically do the problem wrong. You say, okay, there's one out of six chance of rolling a six. So we have one six and then another six and then three rolls that aren't sixes at five six probability. Okay, that would give you a probability of 0.0161. That's the incorrect answer, All right? Because this is a specific scenario where we rolled our two sixes first and second, followed by three rolls that weren't sixes. It's possible that instead we rolled the three things that weren't sixes first, and then the sixes came on rolls four and five, okay? Or maybe they came on the second roll and the fifth roll, right? In other words, there's a lot of different ways that we can roll five dice and get exactly two of them are sixes. And the way we would figure this out is with a combination like we did in chapter four. Okay, so we do that to start. We have five as our sample size. We want two to be sixes. So five choose two is gonna tell us how many different ways can we roll five dice or a die five times and get two of them as sixes. After that, we do exactly the math that we went through uh, over here to the right. So we have one six squared, five, six, two, whatever's left over. Okay, these two numbers should always add to our sample size. All right, five choose two is 10. And then we just multiply it all out and we get our answer. So there's about a 16.1% chance of rolling exactly two sixes. Certain problems are made easier by a table in the back of the book, which has a number of different sample sizes and common probabilities. 
we're going to do this problem with that table. So here it states that McDonald's has a brand recognition rate of 95% across the globe. We randomly select 10 people and we want to find the probability that the specified number of people from our sample recognize the McDonald's brand. Here's the important information from that problem, which I'm now going to cover up with the table. So this is the part of the table that we're interested in. If we look along the left side, we can see it's telling us this is when we have a sample size of 10. Across the top, you see P here. And the probability of success for this problem is 0.95. So we're looking at that last column. What's the only part of this table that we need right now? What's the probability that exactly seven of these people recognize the brand? Now we're just going to go along the table for seven. If we go all the way across, the probability that seven identify the McDonald's brand is 0.010. What's the probability that eight or more recognize the brand? For this, it's as simple as just taking eight or more, adding them up. 0.075 plus 0.315 plus 0.599 gives us 0.989. And the probability that less than six recognize the brand for this problem, there's nothing here that's below six. These are all empty. Remember, less than six doesn't include six. So this is approximately zero.